Hello, I'm Dr. Philip Meese. I'm pleased to share primary results from a phase two trial that evaluated the efficacy and safety of the oral selective tyrosine kinase 2 inhibitor, ducravacitinib, in patients with psoriatic arthritis, or PSA. Tyrosine kinase 2, or TIC2, is an intracellular kinase that mediates signaling of cytokines such as interleukin-23, or IL-23, and type 1 interferons that are involved in the pathogenesis of PSA. TIC2 signaling pathways have only been shown to be involved in immune pathways, unlike those of the other members of the Janus kinase family, JAK1, 2, and 3, which are involved in extra immune pathways. Ducravacitinib is an oral, allosteric, and selective TIC2 inhibitor that binds to the regulatory domain and locks the enzyme in an inactive state. This mechanism of action is in contrast to inhibitors of JAK1, 2, and 3, which competitively inhibit a well-conserved ATP binding site located on the active domain of the enzyme. This phase two double-blind trial randomized 203 patients with PSA equally to oral placebo once daily, ducravacitinib 6 milligrams once daily, or ducravacitinib 12 milligrams once daily for 16 weeks. Eligible patients had a PSA diagnosis for at least six months and fulfilled CASPAR criteria for PSA at screening. They had to have failed to respond or were intolerant to at least one prior therapy, including CSD MARDs or one TNF inhibitor. The primary endpoint was ACR20 response at week 16. Demographic and baseline disease characteristics were overall similar across the three treatment groups. Mean age was 49.8 years, 51.2% were females, 65% were being treated with CSD MARDs at baseline, and 15.8% had previously been treated with a TNF inhibitor. The study met its primary objective with ACR20 responses at week 16 being significantly higher with ducravacitinib 6 milligrams at 52.9% and ducravacitinib 12 milligrams at 62.7% versus placebo at 31.8%. The mean improvements from baseline in hack di scores at week 16 were significantly higher with ducravacitinib 6 milligrams and 12 milligrams daily versus placebo, with improvements evident as early as week four. Higher PASI-75 responses were observed in patients with psoriasis involving 3% or greater body surface area at baseline with both doses of ducravacitinib versus placebo. Significantly greater improvements from baseline were seen with ducravacitinib treatment at both doses versus placebo in SF36 physical component summary scores. 22.9% and 23.9% of patients taking ducravacitinib 6 milligrams and 12 milligrams respectively achieved minimal disease activity response, a composite measure of multiple clinical domains of PSA at week 16. No serious adverse events, including serious infections, were reported in ducravacitinib-treated patients. There was no occurrence of herpes zoster, tuberculosis, opportunistic infection, thrombotic events, or malignancy observed with ducravacitinib treatment at either dose. No differences in mean changes in laboratory parameters were observed between ducravacitinib and placebo treatment arms across the 16 weeks of treatment. Ducravacitinib showed efficacy across multiple disease domains and patient reported outcomes. Ducravacitinib was generally well tolerated in patients with PSA, and the safety profile was consistent with that previously described in phase two and phase three psoriasis studies. Selective inhibition of TIC2 with ducravacitinib is a promising therapeutic option for patients with PSA. Thank you.